Listen, mother, this is in regards to your last message in our text message dialogue. Once again, you are portraying me as the bad person, and I don't appreciate it. Let me reiterate, I don't appreciate it. I literally have to take time out of my busy schedule to ruminate so that I could collect an adequate response so that I would not come across contemptuous in any way, shape, or form because I know how you love to misconstrue things. I know how you love to misinterpret things, and that is not okay, and I will not allow it. I don't condone it whatsoever. My mother stated that I do not allow her to see her grandkids while I'm here early this Sunday morning to vindicate myself. That is a mendacious statement. That statement is absolutely mendacious. I know for a fact that if she will send me that foolishness, she will disseminate that propaganda to everybody else. Listen, mother, I will administer you a monetary contribution of $5,000 cash, cash in hand. If you can validate and substantiate where I insinuate it, you are not allowed to see your grandkids. I know for a fact that you will never lay vision on that money because there is no such thing that will validate me insinuating. You are not allowed to see your grandkids. That's just foolishness that you conceptualize. Some of you may be asking yourself, why is Jeffrey addressing this matter publicly? Well, I am glad you asked. I'm addressing this matter publicly for the simple fact that I don't want anything to be misconstrued. I don't want anything to be misinterpreted. I don't confabulate with my mother, and I know for a fact that if I were to confabulate with my mother over the telephone, everything, the entirety of our conversation would be misconstrued. The entirety of our conversation would be misinterpreted. She he would say something like, uh, girl, I spoke with Jeffrey and girl, he cursed me out. Girl, I, he, he just couldn't stop calling me names. He, he done said he was going to come all the way down here and slap me in the face. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with that boy. We, 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 we got to continue to pray for him. So, something ain't right in his head. I, I, I just don't know. So, something just not right with him. I don't want anything misconstrued. Therefore, I'm addressing this matter publicly so that the family is well acquainted with what has transpired and what is transpiring. Therefore, no image of me will be portrayed in a negative way, shape, or form. Uh, mother, based off my response in the second paragraph, your response said your intentions were pure. Uh, let me ask you something. How am I to be aware that you have pure intentions when the entirety of my life most of your intentions have been pessimistic. Do you have recollection of when I was at Papa's funeral viewing his body, paying my respects, you come up to me, commission something contentious and divisive that generated and precipitated a negative reaction from me, and you endeavor portraying me as the bad person? Well, let me tell you something. That is pessimistic intentions. Mother, I'm going to be applicable to you for a minute. I'm going to be very transparent. The days of you endeavor portraying me as the bad person, those days have been eradicated. Anytime you endeavor portraying me as a bad person, I'm telling you, I'm going to divorce you and your persona that you present to the people. It's nothing against you, but right is right and wrong is wrong. The truth is the truth and a lie is a lie. Mother, in regards to my first paragraph, a more mature, adequate response would be something along the lines of, uh, listen, Jeffrey. I know we haven't had the best relationship over the years. Um, you, you know, being your dad, you know, we're, we're really getting of age. And, you know, we would really love to be in a grandkid's life. And then, you know, I would really love to reconcile things, et cetera, et cetera. That's the start. From there, things can elevate and progress. You just stating my intentions were pure again. How am I to know? As I've taken time to come to play, I've come to the realization that you are a drama queen, and you have always been a drama queen the entirety of your life. You are enamored of drama. You are enamored of mess. It captivates, and it engrosses you substantially. Well, I don't know if you realized it yet, mother, but I've been elevated to another dimension called peace. You will not steal my peace. You will not steal my happiness. You will not steal my joy, and I meant it. Like I told you, those days of you and never portraying me as a bad person are over, and you want to tell people... You want to convey to the people, girl, Jeffrey, he, he, he don't talk to me. He don't talk to the family. He don't have nothing to do with the family. When it pertains to the family, he's of seclusion. We try to talk to him. He's taxi turned. He won't talk to us. He ain't got nothing to do with us, girl. No, no, that's not the veridical. No, the veridical is Jeffrey is not engaging himself in a proximity of drama, in a proximity of mendacious things, in a proximity of BS. And as long as you are generating BS, as long as you're generating mess and drama, I'm going to always be of seclusion. I'm going to always be isolated. 
my family and I. You know, I remember about a year ago, you called me on the phone, and the first thing you convey is something mendacious. The conversation immediately turns contentious. Hmm. How do you expect anything positive to materialize when the first thing you insinuate is something mendacious? It won't. And shortly after that, that's when the situation at Papa's funeral transpired with you and I. I'm telling you, I am not about that drama. I, I'm not. In the last sentence you state, you need to remember your beginners and who helped you all those times. Whoever said I did not remember my beginners, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Maybe when I was younger and immature, I did not show appreciation, but I appreciate everything. I appreciate the fact that you adopted me, because if you had not adopted me, I would not be the man that I am today. I would not be where I am today in life. You proceed to say everybody needs somebody. Maybe you don't. I never opposed to that. I know everybody needs somebody. Maybe you don't. That's that pessimistic stuff I was talking about. Lastly, your last sentence. You had a good extended family who cared about you. As I scrutinized that sentence, I couldn't help but observe that you utilized past tense words. Had, cared. You had a good extended family that cared about you. What are you really trying to say? You know, it's extremely melancholy when I rendered my phone to Jess and I said, Jess, read this and administer your commentary. Her response to the text messages were, Dad, she put the blame on you. My response... I know, right? A 13-year-old sees it. Come on, now. This is another problem we were having. You only wanted to spend time with Jasmia. You did not want to spend time with my other kids. As a matter of fact, you would say pessimistic things pertaining to them. I was adamant when I conveyed my kids are a package deal. Chazet parents, they spend time with them. They call them. They FaceTime them, etc., etc. They do for one. They do for all. They don't just do for one and not do for the others. It don't work that way. You will not just see Jazz and not see my other kids. It never will work that way.